Hi, this is Tim and Dole. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. A podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and being a steward of the land. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. It's almost Halloween, Tim. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm telling you what, uh, Halloween for me is like uh, a perfect trifecta for, for deer hunting, so I'm pretty excited. Yeah, and, and this Halloween is uh, really starting to look up as far as hunting-wise with the temperatures really chilly in the Midwest, uh, especially where we're at. We've actually had some snow, right, already, so... Yep, I was out uh, hunting uh, yesterday evening and it looks like they're just a little, just on the verge of starting to do some chasing. I saw one deer, it was doing a little chasing of a, of a doe, but uh, clearly she wasn't interested just yet. But I think uh, it's going to be awesome. Cool. Well, before we get to this week's episode, let's talk about uh, what have you been up to the last uh, couple weeks. So, as you know, I went and uh, purchased a grain drill. Um, a 70 year old McCormick grain drill and uh, and I'll be honest with you Joel I, I didn't even know what a grain drill is until until well, I knew what it was but I didn't know how to operate one so I bought this up in northern Minnesota and uh, I think it would cost me $900 but the most important thing to me was is the the grain box was immaculate uh, no rust in it and that's what I was looking for um, I had a couple of little things that I'm going to need to work on, but uh, so I bought a grain drill, and uh, I was out. Um, I needed to plant some winter rye, and rain was in the forecast, and uh, so I have a Moultrie uh, broadcast spreader, not a sponsor, nor do I see them becoming a sponsor. <laughs> Uh, well, we, we'll leave that out. <laughs> we'll leave that out for right now. Right? <laughs> but anyway, uh, anyway, Moultrie, the, my spreader ended up shell, shelling out, and I only had like five hours on it. So I had to get this winter rye in the ground. So my other, only other option was to use this grain drill. So after greasing all the zerks and uh, a couple cans of WD-40, um, I decided I'd try it, and I ended up planting about seven acres of winter rye and uh, did a great job uh, super happy with it learned a lot and uh, um, other than that uh, that's that's all I've been doing this last week yeah yeah I uh, I am in winterizing mode for the most part um, I was hoping to get the boat out one more time and uh, you know usually there's a 60 or 70 degree nice day here in October or even November sometimes, but I don't see one in the forecast and I don't want to wait, uh, you know, wait too long. So really been hitting the boat as far as winterizing and uh, my lawn tractor at home, I uh, mowed the grass for the last time and, uh, and then took the mowing deck off and then put the loader on ready for snow. So, um, you know, that's, that's really what I've been up to for the last week, uh, trying to get going. I have been doing a little bit of woodworking projects here, uh, little, little American flags uh, with the same topic, a little, uh, little deer head on it. So uh, trying to work on Christmas gifts and, and whatnot uh, moving forward. And, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty much what I've been up to. Well, I see you've got uh, something around that monster can. What, what do you got there? Yeah, so we talked about in previous episodes that we're going to be in the koozie business, right? So we got, you know, we're sporting the hats and we got the car hearts on today and uh, we are now in the uh, koozie business. So I'll, I'll take some pictures of this and get a little better uh, uh, view of these koozies. So if you are in the market for a two dumbass uh, koozie, we, we are now uh, able to uh, meet your needs. Awesome. I know they can, uh, best way at this point right now is just to reach out to us via, via our email, uh, Midwest Hunting and Outdoors at gmail.com. That's probably the best way. Um, I think uh, you and I are going to need to make a decision whether we want to spend a little money on our website, which we're currently, uh, which we currently have, 
and make it uh, to where you can order right off our website. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it easier, but um, we're, like you said, we're just not there yet and we want to make, instead of making four or five changes, we want to make one and make it the right change, right? So um, we'll get there. Um, in the meantime, be patient with us and just communicate uh, via the email and we would appreciate that. Excellent. Episode. Let's, uh, let's talk about our episode. What are, what are the folks going to see today? Well, I think uh, as we start to get into hunting season, one of the things that starts to come up is you get lots of time to sit in that tree stand and think about what you got to get done. And uh, one of those things is, is, hey, trees that I need to either harvest because when they're leaning down or uh, some, I, I need to stock up from a firewood perspective or what have you. And uh, with that, uh, our steel chainsaws might need some extra saw blades that are sharpened. So with that, even with even though it's a steel, every chainsaw needs uh, sharpened blades. So that's, right. that's what our episode is—a quick episode um, around uh, what we have found. Tim and I have found to be pretty effective, pretty easy way of sharpening your uh, sharpening your blades, and we want to share that with our audience. That's right. So more to come. All right, as we talked about earlier, uh, I'm just going to do a quick episode on uh, sharpening your chainsaw blade. And um, I'm sure we've all started off with just doing it ma manually and mechanically. Um, but my brother has uh, kind of tipped me into this and uh, um, I've had this electronic grinder uh, chainsaw blade sharpener for a couple years now. And uh, Tim started to use it, and I've used it, and uh, we just wanted to share it. So what, what this is, is a uh, Chicago Electric Power Tool uh, Chainsaw Grinder. There's other ones out there. Um, this one's from Harbor Freight, and I think it's around 30 bucks um, before you can get a discount. So I think if you have coupons, you keep an eye on their ads, I wouldn't be surprised if you can't can get this closer to 20 bucks. Um, than 30 but super simple and uh, we've had great luck with it and uh, my brother swears by it Tim's had great luck with it I've had really good luck with it and boy can you sharpen some uh, chainsaw blades pretty quick with it you know on top of that Joel uh, before you had this we would send them out and to have them sharpened it was seven dollars a blade so in short order, this thing pays for itself. It's def it's paid for itself four times over between you and I um, in the last couple of years. So good point, good point, Tim. So let's start with um, what I like to do is uh, the first thing is you get you really have to be careful and, and be able to identify where you started and where you've ended. So I, I usually take a marker and uh, just put a, a mark on uh, part of the chain uh, blade that I know, the tooth that I know, hey, this is the, this is the tooth that I started at. And uh, how this is set up is uh, you've got a little rail here that you slide your uh, chainsaw blade in. So you got that little flat blade on the back. What's that? What's the purpose of that? This? Yes. Yeah, so let's talk, let's talk through the mechanics of this real quick. So you put your blade you put your chainsaw blade in the, in the rail here, and uh, you've got two knobs. Uh, the knobs basically are little gears that allow you to move the chain left or right, forward or back, however you want to look at that. And um, this little gauge here, dog, I'm going to call it a dog. Um, when I move the chain ahead, it flips behind and won't allow the chain to go back. And why that's very important is, you'll see that in a minute, is uh, the position of this chain in correlation to the grinding wheel is like super important. And this, this uh, little dog allows you to position that. Right down here are your degrees, left and right, um, ranging from uh, zero to about 35 degrees. Just like a miter saw, right? Just like a miter saw, and I'm at uh, approximately uh, you know, 20, 23 and a half. Perfect. All right, how this uh, little gem works is um, you've got the grinding wheel up above, you've got a little uh, brake. This is your brake to hold the chain in place. 
So once you get it positioned, and um, I always, you know, do a couple of these um, without the motor running. And what you want to do is you want to have your grinder just touch the very tip of that chain. I don't know, most people don't, uh, don't know that um, really what cuts wood on your chainsaw is, is not the whole tooth, it's really the top of the tooth. And that's what we're trying to sharpen here is, is that, that little top of the tooth. And you'll see that you know, we're not taking much off of this. So, so what we're trying to do is uh, your grinding wheel to go down and just touch that little top of the lip. And I'll, uh, I'll point to it here where the grinding wheel is. Um, this little tooth, you're trying to sharpen the top of that little tooth. So I'm going to turn it on and uh, hit the brake and just I'm just touching that uh, top of that tooth. You can hear it just nick it. I'm going to advance it. Again you can only do one. These teeth are um, facing opposite directions so you got to skip skip the tooth here. We'll come back and make that change here in a minute. And then I'm going to go to the next tooth and Boom, got that tooth, and now I'm set, a break, boom, and uh, that's as simple as it is. When you get done with all the teeth, um, keep an eye on your, keep an eye on your colored tooth, and when you, that colored tooth comes back around, it means you've got 50% of the teeth done, and what you're going to do is you're going to... Just change this to the other side and do that, do the opposite teeth that haven't been sharpened. And uh, I'm guessing, Tim, you know, we could, we can probably do this whole chainsaw in uh, two, three minutes um, at the most. And uh, it does a great job. Yeah, so um, if you have any comments or questions on this, you know, please uh, include those in the comments or send us an email. And uh, we would uh, love to hear, hear from our uh, viewers. And um, if anybody else has some better tips uh, that we've missed, we're certainly not experts on this. But we really find this tool very helpful for us uh, during chainsaw season. And it's been a great, great time. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.